But then you guys get nervous when the police are behind you and you're driving around, you check your seatbelt, everything else. <laughs> so this is your chance to get back because now I have all of you looking at me. So um, in either event, uh, it's my honor to be here today to speak to you a little bit about my experiences. I've been here with the uh, police department for almost a year and a half now. Um, and I'm gonna share with you some of our experiences tying in with this intersection of social media, engaging with our community, uh, and recruitment. So I don't think it's any surprise to any of you that uh, law enforcement is facing a, a crisis right now. Um, and it really impacts us in the area of recruitment. There's a lot of different reasons for it. Um, but I think this quote sums it up. It says, the American policing profession may be facing the most fundamental questioning of its legitimacy in decades. The very essence of policing is being debated in many cities, often because of controversial video recordings of police officers' actions, community trust has eroded, and the professionalism of the police is being questioned. Our focus with the Clear Lake Police Department is really within four areas. We focus, number one, on personnel because we can't do our job without having people out there to respond to calls, to answer the phones, to provide code enforcement, uh, everything else. And when we don't have those resources, we can't deliver the other levels of service. The second area that we focus on is community engagement. And these two areas are the primary things that we're gonna talk about uh, today. Our other two areas are accountability and excellence, and you'll see they kind of fit into what I'm gonna tell you about. Um, but those are the two areas that we're gonna focus on. So why social media? You're gonna get some training I saw on the agenda later today of kind of how to put this into action. So my focus is more on what's our experience um, and really how social media is tied into our recruitment strategy, but really about our branding and our community uh, engagement. So according to some numbers, about 79% of the population within the US uh, uses some sort of social media. Uh, YouTube is the number one, followed by Facebook, Instagram, and then it kind of drops off uh, from there. Why do people use this stuff? Well, it's user friendly, it's free. I have an asterisk there because we all know nothing's really free. They're mining your data. There's a lot of reasons of why it's uh, free. Um, but in either event, it's, it's free to the end user. People can share their opinions, they can be surrounded by like-minded people, um, and they can engage from the comfort of their house or wherever it may be. Um, for our side of things, I think businesses, government, everything else, uh, it's a very cost-effective medium for us to communicate uh, with our constituents um, and those that we're trying to reach, and we can reach a very wide uh, audience. Uh, some who may agree with what we're doing, some who may not, but it's a very, very uh, wide audience. So. Recruitment, how does it fit into recruitment? Law enforcement right now, if you look at our numbers, uh, nationwide, our failure rate for hiring is about 98.5%. So out of 100 applicants, you figure you're lucky if you get just a couple. Um, and when you take that down to our level, we experience almost that same thing. Um, and I can tell you that right now, we've hired a number of different positions uh, since I've been uh, the chief of police and it still continues to be that hiring a police officer is the first most difficult, followed by dispatcher, other positions, we have, some more, um, we have some more luck. So we can increase our candidate pool significantly. Um, it's much more cost effective compared with traditional methods. So I get advertisements fairly regularly from magazines, stuff like that, that say, pay your money, we'll put your ad into the, the magazine. That's important as part of a marketing strategy and we certainly do traditional marketing, but as we're gonna talk about, social media really helps us tackle a whole lot of different things surrounding recruitment. Because for us, recruitment isn't about just saying, hey, the job's open, apply here. We have systems that do that for us. We use a system called NeoGov that does that. What we're really after is how do we convince somebody to pack up and move, in many cases from halfway across the state, to a strange county that they've never been at, to a city that doesn't have a whole lot of resources, and expect them to stay with us. That's what we're trying to bring in and we're trying to find people who want to do that. And oh, by the way, even though it's a beautiful, nice rural county, uh, the per capita call volume that we put on our officers is absolutely phenomenal. Um, the number of calls that they handle is in the thousands of calls per year per officer, uh, exceedingly busy. So social media allows us to target by geography and interest. So we do do some advertising and I'll talk about that with boosting some of our stuff and I'm sure they'll talk about it later on. Um, but primarily, most of our outreach is actually unpaid, uh, but you can certainly reach a very, very uh, broad audience. I mean, you can target people who are interested. We, we don't really target with advertising for outside the state of California because it's very difficult to uh, transfer in. Um, and then within the state, obviously, we generally don't target like Southern California because we're not going to be able to compete with the wages, et cetera, that they have uh, down there. 
Um, social media allows us to get that wide reach, and most importantly, it's a wide reach that's based upon relationships and trust, right? Because when you look at Facebook, you look at Instagram, what's it all about? It's my social network here that connects to yours and connects to somebody else's. And within all that is some level of trust. That's why I'm friends with you. That's why you're friends with somebody else. So we can have some credibility when we put information out there. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about how that works uh, in practice. So when we go out and we recruit and we go out to different places and talk to people, one of our uh, primary recruiting places that we found was actually Fresno, which was very similar to our year in turn of a more rural area, obviously the city isn't, but just outside of there. Um, and people were looking for a change but did not want to go to the Bay Area, so we decided to capitalize on that. Um, but what we find out is that when we go to hire people, the first thing that they do after they hear from us, um, or they even hear that we're coming to their academy, um, is they go online and they go to research about us. And primarily, sorry, but it's not the websites that they're going to, they're going to social media to see what's on there because that's the real-time context and that's the trust. The other stuff is like the static magazine uh, that you pick up. So what are they looking for? And I think a lot of this applies, actually this data right here applies to any sort of business. If you're trying to hire somebody and bring them in, they wanna know obviously some information on your organization, but they wanna know how does the business want to be perceived, not how are they perceived, but how does that business or that entity see themselves? They wanna look at your company culture. They wanna see what are you about, what do you believe in, what's your brand, what's important to you, what's not important to you, and see can they start to align because they're gonna make a lot of life decisions if they decide to uh, choose you. They also will start to look at current employees. So when they go on there, they'll figure out who's liking the page. They'll see who talks about who and see are these people happy? Are they complaining about the organization? For us in government, they may go to our labor unions and see what kind of stuff that they have to say. Um, so again, they're looking for a lot of things in here, and if you don't have the content, you can't answer these questions, you're not gonna be successful in getting the candidate pool. So I started in uh, July of 2018 when I came to the department. Um, two things really I can break down. We have a mission statement I'll show in a minute, but uh, my focus is set forth by the city council and our community, a cleaner, safer city. Very, very simple, not complicated. Um, when I came in, one of the things that I noticed is our perception in the community was on the rise, um, but it hadn't been good. And when I talked to people, that was a, a big detriment. And outside of our region, when people heard that I was coming up here, they had all different kinds of thoughts and a lot of the information was misinformation. So we set forth on a mission to improve our uh, presence and particularly on Facebook, tying in with uh, recruitment. So just in about the last year, we've had an 87% increase. We went from just under 4,000 followers to uh, about 7,500 uh, as of yesterday, which, and I'm gonna share with you kind of how we did this. I think that number's interesting. Um, city of you know, about 16,000, 7,000, it's actually pretty high proportionally, but this is more interesting. So this is the last 30 days, we've reached 52,000 people with just our stories about what we do as a police department. That is the power of social media. It's not the people that like you, it's who do they share to, who do they talk to when you put stuff up, that's the outreach. It's, it's like a multiplication effect. So our mission in the police department, this is the more wordy one that's on the wall, um, is to enhance public safety by providing professional, trustworthy service in partnership with the community. Those words are highlighted because they're important to us, and uh, if you know somebody that ever comes to apply for us, one of the questions I asked in the chief's interview is it, why, what is it unique about you that's gonna help us fulfill this mission? And that's after they get to sit and look at it and see those words. And you'll find that with each person, they pick up on different words and how they're unique. And that's what makes us strong as an organization. We all have our different strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so what have we been doing? So one of the most important things that we can do uh, is to humanize the badge. With all the issues that we're facing with recruitment um, and people looking to go into this job, they look at talking to their families, telling them, hey, I'm gonna go do this, there's the agency I'm gonna work for, and bear in mind, it's not just the candidate that's looking at us, or you as an organization, all their family members are too, because they're gonna comment and say, ooh, you should stay clear of that place, or hey, you should go there, or whatnot. Um, this post that's up here, uh, it was basically a story in the middle of the night uh, during, it was in March, it was a cold night. Um, there was a guy, and I truly couldn't make this up, but the guy, is he was blind, he was missing a leg, um, and he had a service dog and he was abandoned over at the, uh, the Walmart uh, shopping center. So the officer decides to give him a ride and one of the things we've been pushing, and this is something you have to do, getting, uh, being effective in social media and recruitment, and branding, all this stuff, it takes effort. 
And so we charge with all of our employees say, hey, you have smartphones, just take pictures of things that you do. Um, they don't like to do it because they just like to do their job and they don't think they should tell everybody what they're doing, but we have to tell our story. Um, so they took, a, they took that picture, we posted online. Um, we ended up reaching over 100,000 people. This went across the United States. We had people from other states. I've had numerous people from all different stuff who may not even know about Clear Lake or Lake County in particular, but that have heard about this post and will ask questions about this post um, or make a comment to say, you know what, I saw something about some ride that you gave somebody. Here's the, the, the back end story. Cops do this stuff all the time. You just never hear about it. What you hear about is what the news tells you and everything else. And so the point being here is that when we want somebody to come and look and see our social media presence, we want them to know, hey, we're humans. Hey, we do stuff. This is, this is how we tell our story about what's going on. The other thing that I want to point out is that we have, so there's 9,000 likes on there, 4,500 people loved us. Um, four people were angry with us. Um, <laughs> I, I won't spend too much time on this, but it is important to know when you're doing any sort of strategy uh, and you're going out there, you're going to get people that uh, start to be crass, but they'll be pissed off at you. They'll be angry, upset. Um, did you have some? They, they could, absolutely. There's a lot of different reasons, um, but I'll get another one where we have actually people that were upset about something. Um, but you're right, is don't look at the big numbers here. It's like going and teaching and you get evals, you get the, the middle of the road ones. You always look for the really good and then the not so good, and that's where you get your best feedback uh, within there. So a lot of metrics that you can get, and this is stuff that you'd have to pay somebody in marketing stuff to do studies and that sort of thing. We get it in real time, and we react in real time based upon what the feedback is of how a story goes. Um, how it's received by the, the community. These are two other ones in that kind of humanizing the badge. Um, this one ties directly into recruiting. So the message on here is it says, when most people think of the duties of a police officer, they think of arrests, traffic stops, investigations, and responding emergencies. While these are all accurate, our overarching call is to public service. And then it goes on to tell about that they found this individual whose cart became disabled, and so the officer pushed the cart and the sergeant uh, took the picture. This one on the right here says, doing the right thing isn't always glamorous, but it's an essential part of being a police officer. FTO Harden and Officer Shores took a moment between calls to help a resident who was having trouble clearing some of the leaves from the drainage in their house. And you can see her there in her, her wheelchair. So 16,000 people reached on that, 5,000 people engaged with us. Um, on the other one, 21,000 people uh, with 2,000 reactions. The face value is, it's about humanizing the badge and, and such. But if you're going into law enforcement and you're applying for us, you're in the academy, you know exactly what an FTO is in this case and the sergeant there. The real story here is we're reaching out to, or the second part of the story is we're reaching out to people who are looking to work for us to tell us this is what we stand for. We're extremely busy, but we also expect you to go out and to do the right thing and to slow down and, and help somebody when they need help, even if it's not part of our traditional duties. I um, mean, so those people see this and that re they react to that. They know, oh, FTO, that's a train officer. Geez, that's what they expect of me there. And we, we know that this works because when people come in to apply, they'll bring up stuff. The number one thing talked about our agency when somebody comes to apply is, oh, I saw this on Facebook or, or whatnot, or I saw this social media story. Some more stuff specifically with recruiting, and I think this ties into what you all are doing and, and the branding and, and uh, marketing Lake County. Look. I could tell you that we're one of the lowest paid agencies. I could tell you that we're one of the hardest working with officers, um, a lot of overtime, all these sort of kind of negative things, but that's not gonna get people to apply. What we have to do is we have to challenge people and put out a call to action to see when their values, their interests align with ours, do we then have that hook to say, hey, are you up to it? Can you come to us? And so I'll give you two examples. The one on the left is for a police officer. Um, this one, we reached 51,000 people. Um, that's wider than the circulation of most you know, police magazines where they want us to get advertisements and so forth. Um, but it says, are you a lateral academy graduate enrolled in a police academy? Are you looking for a challenging, fast-paced environment where you will quickly gain experience in making a difference? We are looking for energetic and community-oriented police officers to join our team and help us make Clear Lake a cleaner, safer community. If you're up for the challenge, visit the link below for more information. So again, it's not just, hey, we're hiring, come apply for our job, here's our job flyer. That's actually how we used to do it here. I mean, we didn't get much reaction uh, on there. The second one is, is more interesting. So this is like one of the lowest paid jobs that we have at the city, but it's a critical one that we're trying to fill. It's a new position, which is an office assistant for the front window because we've gotten so busy that our staff that used to kind of juggle different things, they can't answer the phones, deal with that. 
Um, so in this case, we said, hey, are you a positive, self-motivated team player? Do you communicate well and have good computer skills? Do you want to be part of making Clear Lake a cleaner, safer city? You'll notice almost all of our posts talk about cleaner, safer city, because that's, that's what we're after. It then goes on to talk about what they're going to do, and you can't see the rest of it, um, but it talks about it being a position for growth, because we know that's also something that we can capitalize on, is people can come in our organization, we do a lot of promotion from within. And so we want people to see that and go, you know what, that may not be the end job that I want to do, but it could be a route to get to the job that I want. So again, another way when you look at uh, marketing. <laughs> the other part is to, to have fun. Um, so this one, we did an announcement and you have to, as you get to know how the social media stuff works, um, it doesn't show the whole story at once. So the initial story just talks about that uh, we've got a new police alligator um, and they're going to be supplementing our canine program. And we talk about, um, <laughs> There's actually real information, but they have excellent night sight, um, a good sense of smell, and their bite force is amongst the highest recorded for an animal. <laughs> so what you had to do is a little see more button. So the see more, it said, if you're still reading this, think we're serious. We're sorry to break the news, but we don't have an alligator program. Um, and then we go on to explain how we found this alligator and rescued it. It went to a sanctuary and, and everything else. Um, 57,000 people uh, reached. Um, again, very, very wide circulation. The point of this was just to say, hey, we put out a lot of serious things like, you know, people getting stabbed and bad things happening and all that, but we can have fun too and we want our followership to know, hey, we have a good sense of humor. Um, to the point about negative reactions, so we did get a negative reaction here that somebody says completely inappropriate that we have an alligator program um, <laughs> and that, uh, that unfortunately their family members got this information and they thought we're going to let alligators into the lake and there are alligators out there. and so. Um, in either event, uh, that is an opportunity though, and I'll hit on a minute, is to make sure that don't let those opportunities pass up to talk to people who come in with that, because we could just ignore it and laugh it off. Um, but we had quite a back and forth, and I don't know that we ever agreed to, uh, we probably agreed to disagree. Um, but it is important to take advantage of those opportunities to uh, talk, but have, have some fun. The other thing are uh, videos, um, and I'm not gonna play these, but um, this was during a time there's some stuff going on, again, more negative uh, media coverage. Um, so what we did is the officer took a quick video after she recovered this uh, machete off somebody um, and she showed him how they had it concealed and how quickly they had to react. It's a very short video, not, uh, not much to it, um, but it told a story about what we face. Uh, interestingly enough, people spent 64 hours consecutively, if you take everybody that watched it, 64 hours of viewing time of watching this. But more importantly, that was 64 hours of learning about Clear Lake Police Department and what we face at Clear Lake Police Department and law enforcement in general. This was another one where uh, we rehabbed the entire uh, inside of the police department. Um, we wanted to tell our story about what was going on with it. So we set up a little camera time lapse, super cheap as an iPhone with a, I think a free app or maybe 99 cents, uh, record it and then strung it all together and made a little video. Um, again here, 110 hours of time that people were learning about what we're doing at Clear Lake. Because when I started here, the number one complaint from employees was they were embarrassed to even have a family member come see their workplace because it was so atrocious inside there. This is another video that when I go places, people will talk about, hey, I seen the video about when you guys revamped the inside of the police department. So again, we're telling that story of what we're trying to do. Um, since we're talking about ducks, and I had no idea that that was on the agenda today, <laughs> um, but before I came here today, uh, somebody had posted on it. So it, the, somebody made a post onto our uh, page they said, okay, that was adorable. A CLPD officer with black hair just stopped for a family of ducks to use a crosswalk at Austin Park. Good job. So we like ducks. The point there is that as you invest in this technology, um, it's going to reap dividends because what you really want is you want your audience to become a part of the discussion. It's not a one-way conversation. It's for people to have a dialogue. Um, and your audience, your supporters, even some of your detractors will start to spread stuff and it becomes organic. Um, and that's how people really see the trust and they see the validity of what it is that you're saying. Not that you're just posting up periodic information or doing selfie videos or whatever else, but they see there's a whole community that aligns with what it is that you're trying to say. Um, this thing I thought was funny, it says, uh, we don't have the resources for community engagement. We're using all of our budget to buy social network ads to make strangers to talk to us. Here's the deal, advertising has a place, and I'm sure you'll hear about it later on with boosting posts and so forth. Um, 
but social media, you have to engage, you need to respond to people, you need to talk to them and everything else because that's what's gonna build up that audience um, and people are gonna know that you're authentic. Just buying ads doesn't do the job. It takes an investment of time. So our takeaways, and I'm gonna wrap up here, keep your audience's attention. You need to regularly do different types of posts. Um, again, some funny, some serious, some informative. Uh, be creative, think outside the box. For those of you that are in charge or managers or everything else, engage everybody throughout your organization. They can be very creative in coming up with stuff. I um, talked about having a conversation. So when you do get negative feedback, and trust me, we do, we get some pretty very, very bad negative feedback sometimes, um, is we try to engage with them and, and correct it and at least provide the right information. And we've had many a times where people have come back and uh, if they're really corrected, they end up deleting their entire stream because they're embarrassed. But um, a lot of times I'll actually come back and say, hey, we appreciate you explaining uh, whatever it was. Uh, capitalize on differences. So don't get stuck in that, you know, like for us that, geez, it's woe is me, we can't recruit, we're stuck, whatever else. Find what those differences are and capitalize it and celebrate your successes. You can find them almost anywhere. Uh, build trust amongst your audience because that's what they're gonna look at. If you're inauthentic, um, it's not gonna be effective. So, so uh, definitely work on that. Promoting others, I can't stress enough, is, um, you know, particularly I made a choice, like I don't go on our social media a lot with posting pictures of exactly what I'm doing and stuff because I want our story to be about what are our employees doing, what's our organization. Our organization is much stronger than any one individual. Um, and so we want to make sure that people see that when they come into there as, hey, you know, many of our articles are brand new police officers. We want somebody else who's looking to come on to say, hey, that could be me on there doing something positive and getting some recognition. Um, so again, promote others, I think from the business context, it's great to have everybody here because this success isn't about a single business, it's really about our entire region. Um, and so, you know, there's a competitive nature, but we have to also uh, be supportive. So with that, any questions? Because I know the timekeeper is here to throw me off. Yes. So one of the things that I hear from going out in the community is I mentioned about hearing, hey, here's what you're posting. But I get a lot of comments about people saying, hey, you know, your officers are stopping and talking to this person or doing this, they're doing that. That's not uncommon, you know, when you first come in new to the organization, people come in and say good stuff, but to see it persisting almost a year and a half later means that there's some change that's going on. And I'll let you in on a secret, I don't go out and preach to people to say, go stop more on that thing, go do this or that. What we try to do is to create a culture where that's the norm, that's what people expect. And of course, we have some corrections with individuals. Um, the buy-in there, we have some that don't want to go do that stuff, but even the ones who don't want to write stories and whatever else, suddenly in my email slips in a photo or something else of what's going on. Um, and I think it's my judge to take and, you know, we pull all that stuff together. So it is a process. So we don't directly take on like a, a negative media story, but we certainly watch and see when there's discussions going on. Like the one about the knife thing, there was a lot, I mean, there's, when that situation happened, we were right in the midst of the uh, uh, reform bill on law enforcement use of force and everything else. And we weren't advocating one way or another, we just wanted to educate so that people understand what they're facing. So I think it's more of that, more of a subtle thing. We're not there to take a, you know, a political position against something or to challenge that you know, a newspaper does this article or that sort of thing. I mean, quite frankly, a lot of that stuff isn't the most successful because we can't give much context in a short thing. In other words, if we make a statement, people say, see exactly, they're tone deaf, they don't understand. It's, it's not a good forum for doing that. So instead, we tell our story, we tell about our challenges, um, but we don't, I wouldn't say directly take on that. Comments we do in some cases, depend upon what they are, we will try to engage and talk or to correct the record, or sometimes we find out we did screw something up and we go try to fix it and, and handle it. Anything else? Think one last one? I'm sorry, what's that? Um, so there's about three of us that regularly write the material. Um, and then we also get the sergeants will sometimes write in stuff. Our biggest challenge has been not necessarily getting content for things, but getting out of this world of writing press releases all the time because we're not releasing to the press, we're releasing directly to the agency. We still value our press partners, um, but to get them out of the, you know, just the facts, ma'am, is we want to tell the story. We don't just say Joe Schmo's arrested. That's why you'll see our site. We don't post like booking photos generally on there um, because that's not. To see somebody caged up in a car isn't what we're after. What we're after is to show what the officer's doing. So it might be that they're walking somebody a car or whatever else, um, but we are conscious of that to say, hey, we're what are we trying to say? Um, there's obviously rosters and logs you can get of who's been arrested and all that. But um, So it is a challenge to get the people and to get them trained, and, and you have to be very, very careful about who's posting your stuff because incorrect 
information that's on there or things that you know are insensitive, that sort of stuff, um, can go wrong. And, and we run the greatest challenge. We've had some pretty funny posts. Um, one of our officers, she's very good at writing them, but we have to be super careful because some of those can go off one way and all of a sudden it's, it's a runaway train. So, Okay, with that, I appreciate your time and uh, thank you. Thank you.